Today we're going to be talking about how we actually approach people when we go out and minister for presence evangelism. You're having coffee with Conrad. Conrad rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net, rocks of revelation being poured out to you. My passion is for you to have a spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And once you develop that relationship, it's contagious. You want to catch other people on fire, too. Now, I've been talking about the difference between prophetic evangelism a little bit and uh, what I like to call presence evangelism. I also highlighted some things that you probably want to take with you, things that I've learned, and how to get some resources. But in this podcast, I'm going to be talking about how you actually, or how we actually approach people in America. And I'm in the Bible Belt. You know, my my gospel's to the lukewarm. My passion is for the lost sheep. You know, that's it's a little different. Everybody's heard of Jesus here. And I'm thinking of people like Kevin Reardon. He's up in Pennsylvania. Stephen Barrett from Holy Fire Japan. They're they're having the different methods, of course, because, um, you know, in in Japan, hardly anybody knows Jesus. So it's completely different, different bait for different types of fish and different fishing holes. Just think of it like that. We have a goal. It's, it's somewhat of a goal to activate kingdom seekers. And one of the things we do is we have this goal of praying for people. And I want to drill that down a little bit better. Uh, when we pray for people, what's happening is we're inviting the presence of God into the conversation and acknowledge Him. Now, conversation is an exchange of words. But when the Holy Spirit's in those words, it makes all the difference. Okay, When we do this, God does what He wants to do whether he wants to heal, whether he wants to do a word of knowledge, or whatever. It's God. He's God. Now, I want you to kind of think of it this way. The devil quotes scripture in Matthew 4 and Luke 4, but he doesn't have the power of the Holy Spirit in those words, right? Jesus does. He was driven by the Holy Spirit to be tempted of the devil. So when the devil quotes scripture, the Holy Spirit's not in it, okay? There's a big difference. So we're inviting the Holy Spirit to come into the conversation in the first place. It's not just empty words, but it's the power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. This is why we need to be led or under the influence of the Holy Spirit as we do this ministry. So, you know, after you encounter a few hundred people, (laughs) you'll start learning from experience which one's God actually highlighted and led you to, and then the ones that you kind of just thought up from your flesh. You'll distinguish the difference between the ones who the Lord has directed you to and the ones you just thought was a good idea. Okay, you remember when Paul was trying to preach the gospel in Asia? You know, and the Holy Spirit, you read this in Acts chapter 16, the Holy Spirit... That's why I'm saying we've got to follow the Spirit. The Holy Spirit prevented Paul twice, it says in Scripture. You know, well, wait a minute. I thought I was supposed to preach the gospel to everybody. But then he says, I want you to come to Macedonia. He had to, his perfect will for Paul was to follow the Spirit and go to Macedonia. So keep that in mind as you're doing this ministry. And you'll know what? You'll, you'll also learn how God can turn your fleshly carnal mistakes into his glory. He can turn it around, man, like Genesis fifty twenty says. You know, uh, you guys thought it was for evil, you know, and, but God turned it around to save many people alive. So God can even turn your mistakes into something great for his glory. Now, also, I've, I've talked about this before in previous podcasts, but as you go out and you work in the field, you probably need to redefine what success means to you. In this ministry of uh, prophetic evangelism or presence evangelism, success is obedience and faithfulness to God. Okay, let him han- let God handle the results. Okay, um, you know you may think, oh well, I need to get a thousand people saved. Well, you know Jesus spent a lot of time with a woman at the well. You know you think, man, he's really wasting a lot of time with this lady, right? What's he even doing talking to a woman anyway? Remember how they were talking about that? He spent a lot of time on that one, but she became like the Billy Graham. (laughs) You know what I mean? She was a big fish. So uh, let him define 
the results. And also, a no from someone that you approach is probably just one, one more nudge from God on that person trying to get their attention. Like, there might have been three other people this week that approached them with the gospel. So even your no, you know, don't think, hey, that was unfruitful. Okay, so let let God handle the results. Okay, um, and I've seen that happen too. So so don't let that discourage you. I've seen some good results. And I'm thinking of one right now. Some good results come out of a very discouraging no. One you're like, oh, you're just like devastated. That was terrible. But God turns it around. I mean, I've seen Him doing that. In in fact, the disciples rejoice. If they were beaten for the sake of the gospel, you know, talk about a paradigm shift. Talk about talk about redefining success. It says in Acts five forty, uh, and to him agreed. And when they had called the apostles, they beaten them. They commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Verse forty one, and they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple, in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. So, you know, in this redefining success, don't let your ego get hurt with a bunch of no's from people. In fact, you know, Jesus even says, rejoice and be exceeding glad when you're persecuted for his name. Okay, this doesn't, and this doesn't give you a license to be a jerk, you know, to be a jerk and call it persecution, because faith works by love. Have you ever noticed that? Faith works by love, right? It's not a formula. It's love. We love the people we approach. We are endeavoring to light them on fire to be kingdom seekers and to transform this region for Jesus Christ. So I went through all of that to say this. Be willing to look stupid for Jesus to activate kingdom seekers. Be willing to look stupid or foolish for Jesus to activate kingdom seekers. Your ego getting hurt is rooted in pride and self-esteem, which is of the devil. You know, Satan had all that pride, and it was he even thought it in his heart. Okay? (laughs) And you know where his fate is. Amen? It's not about us. It's not about how we look. It's about Jesus. It's about expanding the kingdom. Now, with that in mind, how do we approach people? After we're prayed up and we're at our location, we pray in the car. You know, we just keep being prayed up, man. Now, we get filled up with the Holy Spirit the best way we know how. My cup runneth over type thing. When we're filled with the Spirit and the cup runs over, then those next to us will catch some of that anointing. After you do this uh, several times, you'll start noticing that God has a way of highlighting people. It's like a mouse pointer. Your, your attention is just drawn to them. It's like God is saying, okay, I want you to talk to this one. He may even give you a word of knowledge or something. We have our senses exercised by reason of use, not speculation. We got to use it, and then our senses can, you know, will be developed, like Hebrews 5.14 says. But until then, as we're learning, we put the yoke of Jesus Christ on, and we learn from him as we work the field. Now, in the beginning of when we started to do this, I like to do a few things. One is a person making eye contact with me. From that eye contact, you kind of have this check, and it's like, oh, they're, they're like me in this manner, right? From that initial glance. If so, you can approach them and ask them an introductory question. Like, uh, hey, are you from around here? Do you like this park? Do you, you know, are you waiting on the bus? You know, do you know, do you know of any good chili places around here? This way you're establishing rapport and rapport is very important. Okay. Rapport is basically means to make friends. And when I say rapport, I call it removing the rocks of offense so that the sower can actually sow the word of God and get it deeper into their hearts. You need to remove these things, if you can, so that they'll be receptive to what the Holy Spirit will say through you. And and think of it this way, too. If your whole mission, this is one one of the mistakes that I made, my whole mission is to get them to say a prayer. I mean, because the Spirit of God shows up in the prayers, it's just like, oh my, you know, if all they'll do is just let us pray, and we'll invite the presence of God in, you know. But if you have that in the back of your mind, 
it's it's almost like you're trying to manipulate the situation and that that's not ideal okay just keep in keep in communication with the holy spirit ask god how to proceed the more you do this the more you'll go oh you'll be flowing with the holy spirit after a while you know but in your as you're learning they're going to drop some information that you can say hey well you know jesus can fix that you know, you need a new job. You need you got sick family members. You got some unforgiveness going on. You know, it is if they're talking about something like that, you'll give them a clue, uh, or they will give you a clue to where you can pray for them. Say, look, we believe in the power of agreement. Believing in the power of agreement. You know, if if someone's a Christian, they'll know that passage. It's like we just want to agree with you in prayer, and a lot of people understand that. Now, when the sower sows the word. We need to understand that rapport is important. It's the removing the rocks of offense. I know I said it earlier, but I just kind of want to make sure that you're not just going straight to the prayer. It's kind of like it's kind of that's kind of like a used car salesman. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, uh, my goal is not to get to know you. My goal is not to love on you. My goal is just to pray, right? So th- faith works by love. Okay. So and rapport is love. Amen? In other words, we get these things out of the way that would make them uncomfortable before we even offer to pray for them. Okay? Keep in mind, the goal is not always prayer, but to activate kingdom seekers. It may be a word of knowledge, which the Lord gives you, but also oftentimes, man, there's many times that I'll just say, hey, you know, the reason we're out here, we got these Team Jesus shirts or hashtag Jesus shirts. We pray for people. God has set me free from, you know, X, Y, and Z. And I just get excited to start sharing my testimony. Now, another way that we approach people is we find something in common, okay? like a t-shirt. Like maybe they've been to a concert or uh, maybe a backpack. I'm thinking, <laughs> I talked to this one guy about I just said, hey, man, I like your backpack. What do you do with it? And it turned out to just this amazing testimony. I mean, this man that I'm thinking of right now, just because I commented on his backpack, we prayed for him. He got two jobs, a place to stay. His truck was returned. It was stolen. And he got favor with his probation. I mean, just all sorts of stuff. We were talking about unforgiveness and, and all that, removing the rocks of offense with the people in his life, you know. And it was just... It was just an amazing thing. But you just find something in common to talk about. You know, their shoes or their purse or whatever it is. You find something in common, and then you use that as your... You know how people have a conversation piece on their table? You know, you use it. You just start talking about it. And one of my favorite things, and this sounds somewhat devious. It's funny, too. But one of my favorite things is when I see people taking selfies... You know, and they just can't quite get that good picture or there's an odd man out. The odd man out has to be the person out. He's part of the family. You know, he's on this tour or she's on this tour and they just can't let them in the picture because somebody's got to hold the camera. Well, I say, hey, I'll take the picture for you. You know, and as I'm doing that, I start talking to him about Jesus because I have like this six hundred dollar piece of equipment in my hand. And they're like, oh, I've got their attention anyway. That's kind of funny. But I do do that. I do offer to take pictures. And you would be surprised how this actually has turned into some really good um, ministry. If people say no and you're not, don't let that bother you. It, one of the one of the little tricks that I use is I just say, well, I got that no out of the way because there's always on the other side of a no is there's there's success on the other side. You just you just keep going. Um, there's going to be a yes soon, right? Sometimes you have to go through a few people before God hits you with the one encounter of the day. And you know, I'm I'm pretty sure that every day that we've done this, maybe one day. I'm trying to remember, one day I think I let myself get so discouraged that I stopped. But usually, I mean, we've done this many times. I'm thinking early on, I like, I stopped. I'm like going, you know, I shouldn't have done that. Now, now if, if I did that, I, I'd know to keep going. Because it's usually, usually something I've noticed is you just keep going through the nose. And then, you know what? There's going to be that one encounter. There's going to be that one encounter. You're like, yeah, that's what it was all about. I mean, that is, it just keep going. You know, the note, you're not bruised. It didn't hurt you. <laughs> you know, you're good. Just keep going. 
Another way I approach people is I look for religious symbols on their person or on their car or something, or a Christian t-shirt. A lot of people wear crosses as jewelry, and they don't really think about what it represents. Now that is a great segue to talk about Jesus. This is a great way to talk to people about Jesus. Hey, I see you're wearing a cross. What does Jesus mean to you? How has Jesus changed your life? Does your church do any community outreaches? You know, just start asking them about stuff like that because they they think they're just wearing a piece of jewelry. Oftentimes, they don't realize the importance of that symbol. Now, another thing, and I just want you to know, you know, the Holy Spirit forbade Paul from preaching in Asia. But Paul had a scriptural mandate to preach the gospel to every creature. He had the Great Commission. So he was doing what we would say is the right thing. So don't let, don't sit there and say, I'm going to wait for the Spirit to light me up. I'm going to say, if you're not working the field, you're not working the field. Jesus said, go, right? And one of the brute force techniques that, that I used to use, and I still use, okay, is I go up to people and say, hey, How's it going? We're praying for people today. Do you need prayer for anything? Man, that takes about five seconds to say or less. And you'd be amazed. You know, yeah, you're going to get some no's that way. But you know what? You'll you'll be amazed at their face, their head cock. And it's like the Lord had just said, yeah, you need some prayer. I mean, it's just like, whoa. It's amazing. Just try it, man. I mean, the worst they can do is say no, (laughs) right? But you'll see that some people will realize that that that's God sending you there. I mean, many times, uh, I mean, many, many times, half the time, people say, you know what, God sent you. You know, we hear that a lot. And uh, I've been on an empty pier one time. I, we were we were led by the Spirit, I know. We went down this empty pier. It turns out there was two people at the end. We ministered to them for a long time. But we were really prayed up. I don't know why I'm including this in the podcast, but I am. Uh, we were prayed up, and we're walking back, thinking, man, that was cool. And all of a sudden, God kept sending me people that needed to hear stuff I had to say. Like, I had conquered depression. I'd conquered panic attacks. I have lost family members. I've been through the hospital thing. I've been through hospice, you know? And about six of them came up one at a time, man. I'm just telling you, God just orchestrated this whole thing on what was an empty pier. And then all of a sudden, man, just one after the other, it took about an hour and a half to get off of that what was originally empty. So just keep going, man. God will send you people. It's amazing. It's like the fish come once you put the bait in the water. That's how it is. You put the bait in the water and the fish start coming. You ever chum for sharks? You know, what you do is you put blood in the water and they just start coming, man. I don't, I'm not, that's a poor analogy, but that's kind of what happens. It's fisher of men. Now, another thing is, of course, I said we're wanting to get to the prayer part, but sometimes it's just they need to hear our testimony. If somebody says, no, I don't want prayer, and it, maybe I prematurely asked it, you know, or I wasn't led by the Spirit or something, but then I'll say, you know, I want to tell you why I'm crazy enough to come out here in the park, wear these Jesus shirts, and talk to people about Jesus. Jesus has set me free from drugs, alcohol, depression. And I'll, I'll give him a testimony. I'll ask the Holy Spirit which one to give him, right? And then I'll say things, you know what, man? Just last week we saw this miracle, or we saw this miracle. Or I'll have, and another thing is I have on my phone, I have on my phone uh, some testimonies of uh, people that have gotten healed. And them giving their testimony, and I'll just play it for them. It's like a minute long or less, and they'll go, they'll get encouraged and they'll get inspired that Jesus is healing people today. Jesus is setting people free today. So it's not always a prayer, um, but as we talk to people, and we're inspired by the Holy Ghost. It's not just the words, it's the presence of God in the conversation. So it's kind of like a prayer when you share your testimony. There's something about sharing your testimony that's contagious. It's that Holy Spirit fire that lights them on fire too. And they're going to walk away from that conversation, even if there wasn't a prayer. Something's going to be different. You do not see a harvest if you don't sow a seed. You do not see a harvest if you don't sow a seed. If you don't sow that seed, you will never see a tree. You know what I'm saying? So you got to at least sow the word. And they said they overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. The sower sows the word. You can sow the word of your testimony. 
Now, I suggest going out in twos, like Jesus sent them out two by twos. It just makes it easier. Um, and, but if, if that doesn't work, don't let that stop you, you know, because not too many people are evangelizing. If you've got just the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit to go with you, you've got the best out- outreach team on the planet. Amen? So you're, you're good to go. But I will say, after you've done this many times, you will learn of Jesus. Just take the yoke of Jesus on you and work the field, and he'll highlight the ones to talk to. In your words of knowledge and gifting, you'll, you'll start getting sensitive to what's you know, of God, what's of 